Olympic National Park. Olympic National Park, located in northwestern Washington, USA, is famous for its abundance of natural scenery as well as its extremely diverse ecosystems. Established in 1938, the park receives millions of visitors annually and in 1981 was designated a World Heritage Site. Its unique location has created a mix of life and scenery seen nowhere else on Earth. Isolated from other mountain ranges and surrounded by Puget Sound and the Pacific Ocean, the Olympic Mountains have formed due to millions of years of continental shifting. Approximately 35 million years ago, oceanic crust began moving and subducting under a continental crust, forming the mountains. Parts of the oceanic crust were forced upwards by the subduction, forming the peculiar shapes of the Olympics. As well as subterranean forces, glaciers helped to shape the Olympics as we see them today. Glacial sheets from the Ice Age, few of which can still be seen today, eroded the rock of the Olympics, creating the craggy landscape which the mountains are famous for. The glaciers also carved at the Strait of Juan de Fuca and Puget Sound, nearly completely isolating the area from nearby land masses. The park's numerous picturesque lakes are also results of glaciers. Weather and the ocean also affect the landscape of Olympic National Park, gradually eroding rock and depositing it elsewhere. Precipitation in the park is much higher on the western side due to the Pacific air currents bringing clouds to the west. The ocean, a never-ending force, has created the beaches and sea stacks of Olympic over millions of years. However, coastline environments have changed little since one million years ago, as harder rock was uncovered by the pounding of the waves. Olympic National Park has many unique geological and topographical features, one of them being its active glaciers. Olympic National Park is at the lowest altitude in the world, where glaciers exist below 1,000 meters above sea level. Another of Olympic's famous unique features, sea stacks, are stacks of tough rock carved by waves. These sea stacks are often joined by other coastline features, such as caves or tide pools. Due to Olympic National Park's location, the area receives high levels of precipitation throughout the year. Water vapor from the bodies of water surrounding Olympic on three sides results in rainfall during warmer seasons and snowfall during colder seasons. This precipitation helps provide water to the park's flora and fauna. The Olympic Mountains regulate distribution of water vapor over different areas of the park. Some areas of the park receive less than 20 inches of precipitation every year, while others receive more than 200. This distribution has created the distinctive ecosystem of Olympic National Park. Five sub-ecosystems exist in the park, categorized by their location and elevation. These sub-ecosystems are the temperate rainforest, lowland, montane, subalpine, and coastline ecosystems. As the elevation or proximity to coastline varies, plant and animal species also change due to different living conditions. In between areas, where ecosystems transition, can shelter many species from both ecosystems, many of which are unique to only Olympic National Park. Lower elevation ecosystems, temperate rainforest and lowland, thrive due to abundant resources. Water, mineral-rich soil, sunlight, and other conditions make these ecosystems perfect environments for plants such as western hemlock, sitka spruce, western red cedar, and douglas fir. Large and small animals, examples of which include bear, deer, and otters, can make their homes here. As elevation increases and temperature decreases, ecosystems like the montane forest and subalpine zone take over. Due to the lower temperature and higher elevation, water and mineral-rich soil is not as abundant in these areas, giving way for trees like silver fir, mountain hemlock, Alaska cedar, and subalpine fir. And eventually, as the mountains rise, no trees at all. These areas are usually home to more small animals, although larger species can also live here. Olympic's coastline environment is nearly separate from other ecosystems in the park, located nearly at sea level and home to large amounts of species seen nowhere else in the park. Many species here also tend to thrive in very specific habitats and do not go outside the boundaries of that environment. 
Animals such as sea cucumbers or sea urchins can reside in tidal pools, while whales or seals can live farther from the coasts. Life in all ecosystems in the park is intertwined in an intricate food chain. The majority of Olympic National Park is covered in forest, with areas like coastal forests and temperate rainforests being more heavily forested than montane or subalpine environments. Olympic's groves of Sitka spruce, western hemlock, Douglas fir, and western red cedar are key reasons why Olympic was designated a national park, harboring extremely diverse plants and animals. As with most national parks in the U.S. and the world, fire is an important force behind the development of the park. Although in prior decades fire has been suppressed, park managers now moderate fire to clear areas for new growth and to recycle fallen plants. However, fire is not often a natural occurrence in the park, partially due to its climate. Invasive species in Olympic National Park pose a large threat to the wildlife of the park, outcompeting plants and animals for the resources they need to thrive. Invasive species such as the Canada thistle or English ivy have no natural predators in the park, meaning they can spread at an extremely fast rate and kill native plants. Beginning approximately 12,000 years ago, when glaciers were retreating from Washington, groups of humans came to the area in search of animals to hunt. Mastodon fossils from thousands of years ago show marks of spears, showing that hunters were in the area for thousands of years. Other evidence also shows that humans have lived in the marshy environment left behind by the retreating of the glaciers. As forests grew, humans started to gather food from plants instead of only hunting animals. This transition began approximately 10,000 years ago as humans became more and more dependent on the land for their resources. As well as gathering plants for food, natives could fish and hunt animals from the Pacific Ocean. Woven baskets from 30,000 years ago show how natives gathered food and foraged. Native humans used forests for shelter, medicine, and fibers to create crafts. As time went on, villages and tribes developed in the area. The main tribes were the Ho, Klalam, Maka, Kwailut, Quinault, and Skokomish tribes. Tribes would often conduct social gatherings together as traditions, or could have inter-tribal wars. Natives would also make traditional weavings or carvings, often to tell stories or myths. European explorers arrived in the area in the late 18th and early 19th centuries with the intent of mapping the terrain. One previous expedition, undertaken by Juan de Fuca in 1592, had located the strait, but had mapped little else. In 1788, British explorers named the mountain Mount Olympus, and in 1792, British explorers also mapped and named Puget Sound. In 1885, expeditioners on Lieutenant Joseph O'Neill's reconnaissance of the area compiled a map of all their findings in the Olympic Peninsula, the best map at the time. Starting from 1889 and continuing through 1890, another group crossed the Olympic Mountains. Shortly afterwards, Joseph O'Neill made another expedition to the area. After the expedition, O'Neill stated that the area had no practical purposes and instead should be turned into a national park. In the late 19th century, settlers began moving into the area in search of land and resources. Despite the hardships such as terrible winters and large forests, many people wrote of the beauty and natural resources the peninsula had to offer. Although many people heard of the Olympic Peninsula, not many decided to settle there. As settlers destroyed more and more forest to build buildings or make space for farms, concern rose over the area's rapidly disappearing forest and wildlife. In 1897, Grover Cleveland had designated much of the area as Olympic Forest Reserve. In 1909, Theodore Roosevelt designated most of the reserve as a national monument, and in 1938, the area was made into a national park by Franklin Roosevelt, who later added coastal areas to the park. Thank you for watching, and as always, if you enjoyed, leave a like or a favorite on the video, share the video with your friends, or even subscribe for more educational content. Check out some of the other videos in the National Park series, or check out the featured channels 
for more videos.